Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you three different ways to quickly debug the same issue. If you're new to Unity or haven't done a lot of debugging, this should be really helpful for you. So here I've got a game where you destroy cubes and they're supposed to split into smaller cubes like these ones. Let's see, I blast them a couple more times. And then they keep coming after you and then they try to kill you. But the red cubes here don't seem to split. Let's take a look at the code. The first step for me is always finding the code that's supposed to be called. And I know that's my spawn mini cubes. It's supposed to loop through and spawn however many I've set this cube up to split into. So that way I can do it by prefab. And then it shrinks the size of them down to 0.75 or 75% of its current size. Here you can see it uses the current game object to make it basically a copy. And this gets called from on collision enter. When a bullet hits a game object, which is this enemy object, so it has to be something with the enemy on it, then it reduces health adds a point and if we got below zero it well does this little log that's going to be our first way to debug we're going to take a look at and if the split count is greater than zero so that's the number of things to split into and this is a full scaled cube then it does the spawning of mini cubes then it just destroys itself cleans stuff up and does a little bit of a flash if it didn't get destroyed so if it just took damage now, if we jump over to Unity, that log entry is actually in my logs already because I put it there before we started. And if you look right here, you see that this one had a split on death of two and a local scale of one. The next thing that I killed had a 0.75 though. That should be a child object. Uh, oh, but if I scroll down here, look at this. This one's 0.9 this seems to be a problem. So it tells me that something is scaled wrong, which happens often. Designers go in and change things and the scale of objects gets wrong. In fact, if you look here, I've actually got the object selected. If go find my red cube and see that it's at 0.9. So now I've fixed the red cube. Let's blast it a few more times. But the green cubes aren't going to work. Let's check it out. So I kill the red cube. You see it splits, but the green cubes no longer split. Let's see another way that we can debug this. Here I'm back in my code editor and we're going to do something a little different. Instead of using this log entry, I'm going to hit F5 or hit this attach to Unity editor button. I'm using JetBrains Writer, but this works fine in Visual Studio as well. Your hotkey might be different depending on how you set it up, but F5 is the default one. Now over here on the left, I can add what's called a breakpoint. I click on line 28 right there where that 28 was. I can click it on and off and I can add a breakpoint so that when this code gets called, it's actually going to stop execution of the game and jump over to the editor and let me see all of the data and even control the execution. Let's go try that out. So I'll unpause and I'll kill something. There we go. I just killed some object. If I want to know which object, I can look down here at my locals section. This would be in or it's in threads and variables and writer. It'll be under locals or watch or something similar to that in Visual Studio. I've forgotten the exact area. But you can see some of the local data. I've hit a red cube. The split count is two. I can see that just by mousing over it or by looking up here and the scale is at 0.75. I can hit F5 to continue on my execution and I can keep going until I kill something that uh, is actually bugged out. So the orange one didn't bug out or doesn't bug out. Let's see. Let's get a green one back in here. So I'll just stop playing and play again. And this will work while I'm attached. So I can actually stop and start. Now, when you are attached, you might run into um, other things stopping it if you hit like an error or something. So just be ready for that. Okay, oops, there we go. I killed the green cube. We hit a break point and look at that. I can see that my split count is actually zero. So that's why it didn't split. Now, I know I need to go back in and fix this data, but one interesting and fun thing you can do is down in this area here, the local X execution area, I can actually change the data. So I can do underscore split count equals 100 and hit enter. Now it's changed that variable to 100. Watch what happens when I remove that breakpoint. Hit F5 and go back in. Bam, now I had 100 things spawn. I didn't change the data on the prefab though. So if I go look at my, my prefab, it's still invalid at, um, oh no, green cube, not red cube. It's still invalid at zero. It didn't change to 100. So I'm gonna change that back up to two and we'll call it good. Now there are some other interesting things you can do with debugging, like moving around the order of execution. If I hit a breakpoint, I can drag execution up, or I can add breakpoints that are specific to specific objects or conditional breakpoints. If you're interested in that, let me know, drop a comment down below, and I'll do another follow-up video just showing that. For the last debugging tip, we're gonna use a real world example. Here I've got my game with characters that I can run around. Let's hit start. I'll jump in and then we're going to go up and see some ladybugs that will chase after me but never actually attack me. So you can look and 
yeah, there's a couple of bugs I can run on the water. But the ladybugs are standing there and they're never attacking me like they're supposed to. If I zoom in, I can see their names. It's Creep 5 and Creep 2. So I can go find them in the hierarchy here. Go find Creep 2. And then if I scroll down just a little bit, I don't have to go far. My first actual component that's written by me has a custom inspector that shows me a ton of data about this ladybug. So I can see why the ladybug's not attacking and what it's doing. If you look right at the top, it shows some data about the brain. The current state, it's in the chase attack state, and it's trying to use spin kick on something. Apparently there's a little bit of an error with that message there. It's got a message from the ability system that it can't use the ability because the costs aren't met, which makes sense. I've been playing around with costs and pool amounts, and these ladybugs apparently don't have enough of whatever it is. They need energy or mana to use their abilities. This guy, he has enough to use his assault rifle. Let's take a look at how this works, though. This is my character's inspector class. It's a custom editor for the character class, which is just my base class that you saw a moment ago that has all of my core stuff. And I said base class, there's no inheritance, but it's the core one that kind of ties together all of my character stuff, has some old stuff on it as well. But you can see this character inspector overrides on inspector GUI, gets the character that it's targeting. And then if it has a state machine, it just adds a bunch of fields for the state of that state machine, telling me what brain it's using, the current state, the message from that state and any message from my ability system. If I have a target, it'll show me d details about the distance from my target and what that target is, where I targeted maybe on the ground, if I've got a ground target, my current roles, my abilities, my pools, my stats, and even my inventory. I think I might have disabled inventory temporarily though. We're gonna be re-adding it in a moment. After that, on line 79, we have the base on inspector GUI, which makes it do all of the rest of the inspector stuff. So all of the normal things that are kind of all automatically handled right now by on validate anyway are down below. But the important stuff that I actually care about debugging and reading is right up here in the character setup. So I can see that, hey, they don't have enough to use that. And I just go click on any character to debug what they're doing and why they're doing it. I can see that this one wants to use an invulnerability, but can't, that's a little bit strange, probably should debug that and um you know the other ones are just trying to use spin kicks on me what are these towers doing i just hanging out they've got nothing to do so anyway that's the main thing that i like to use i like to use these three different setups the logs the debugging especially when i get a little bit confused with logs and the character data or whatever data isn't showing enough um, and then of course the custom editors custom editors are nice because when you do your build they're not in there anymore they're automatically removed it's just whatever extra data you might expose to show in the custom editor it might be something that you want to clean up later but you probably don't even have to worry about that so give these three a try. If you've got ideas or suggestions that you think people should follow for other ways to debug stuff, let me know in the comments. And if you've got questions about how any of this works, of course, feel free to ask those down below. And oh, also, if you're interested in advanced Unity game development stuff, some advanced architecture stuff, probably around um, RPGs, single player games, and tying together a bunch of systems, check out the page at game.courses. It's not up yet, but there'll be a new a big update there showing some new stuff that's coming in the next couple months. So if you're interested in, in that kind of stuff, um, just go check it out. I'll put a link down below and I'm sure I'll talk about it more when it's out. And other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.